Okay, this is section 2.9. It's actually the last section in chapter two, um, but it's really a continuation of our applications of our derivatives. So today we're gonna talk about this thing which is called a linear approximation and another one which is called differentials. They kind of go together, but they're also kind of separate. So it's really two things in one, but there is a tie-in to both of them. So um, let's start off first of all, by talking about the idea of a linear approximation. Okay, it sounds a little bit intimidating, but it's really not that bad. <clears throat> um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the concept of tangent line approximations to find linear approximations because really they are the same thing. And then we're also going to use those to find differentials. In the first video here, we're going to focus on the linear approximation. So what I want you to do, because to get the actual idea of what's going on here, I want you to graph in your calculator y equals 3x cubed plus 5x squared minus 4x minus 5. Okay, and as you're punching that into your calculators, hopefully you realize just by looking at that, that is not a linear function. It's a cubic function. Okay, it's definitely not straight. Um, and you'll be able to see the curves and stuff like that when you plug it into your calculator. What I suggest is that when you do it, you push, um, after you type this thing in, you do zoom 6. So you'll actually type in zoom and then six, <clears throat> because that's gonna give you a standard 10 by 10 window. Now, fortunately, I have already done this in my calculator here, my trusty calculator online. I've already gone ahead and typed that into my Y equals screen, as you can see there. <clears throat> and I'm gonna go ahead and push zoom six, but I still encourage you to do this on your own so you can practice um, what you have to see here. So zoom, and then six is a standard 10 by 10 window. And voila, you can see that the cubic function is graphed. And again, you can definitely tell that that is not straight. It's definitely curved. It's got um, curves in it, and it's, um, <clears throat> well, it's a cubic. So what I want to do is I want to take and I want to zoom in, centering our function here at negative 2, 0. So first of all, how do we center this thing at negative 2, 0? Well, what that means is you have to... Um, do something which has equal distance on the right and left of negative two, as well as the top and bottom of zero. Well, it's already a 10 by 10 window, so we're already centered at zero in the y direction, but I wanna center it at negative two in the x direction. So you just basically need to pick a value, like in my case, I'm gonna pick two, which is, which is to say that I'm gonna move two units to the right and two units to the left of negative two in the x direction. So when I go to window, I'm gonna reset my X minimum to be negative four, since that's two units to the left of negative two. And I'm gonna set my X maximum to be, neg uh, excuse me, to be zero, since that's two units to the right of negative two. And again, it's already um, centered from negative 10 to 10, which is centering Y at zero. So now let's go ahead and graph this. <coughs> And again, there you can see that's just zoomed in on that particular part of the curve. Okay, so why am I doing that? Well, let's go ahead and zoom that specific curve in a couple of times just to take a look. So to zoom in, you do zoom and then two, and then you actually have to push enter to make it zoom in. All right, and if you look there, you can still see that that thing is curved and it's no big deal. Let's try it one more time. Zoom, two for zoom in. Now look at your graph. If you look at that really closely, it looks like it's linear. It looks like a line. Whoops. Can't write on this thing and have that um, calculator up at the same time, but I'll bring it back up real quick. So again, if you look at it within this little region right here, it looks linear. It looks like a line. It looks straight. It's not. We know that the curve was 3x cubed plus 5. And it's cubic, so it definitely has curves to it. But if you look closely enough, it looks straight. That is what is called local linearization. So we're going to say that the function is said to be locally linear. Therefore, what we can do is we can use a tangent line to calculate a value on the actual graph. 
So let's think about this more in terms of real world um, application. And I said world kind of um, in, you know, em em uh, emphasizing it just because of the fact that we know that the earth is basically spherical. We know that it's round. But as we go outside and we stand on it, doesn't really look that way. As a matter of fact, when we walk down the street, it basically feels like we're walking in a straight line. That's because within our very, very, very small portion of the world, it feels linear. It feels very flat. It feels very small. Um, but we know that we're actually technically walking around the outside of a sphere. Okay, but that's what it means to be local, locally linear, to look at a very, very, very small portion of something and be able to tell um, what's going on there because we can basically say that it's linear in that really, really, really tiny region. I really can't emphasize how important this concept is going to be. It's going to carry through the rest of calculus for a lot of other things that we're doing. Looking at a very, very small portion of something and making some kind of assumptions based upon that. So what we're doing, again, is we are taking something which we know not to be linear, but looking at a very, very, very small region of it and saying, okay, within that small region, it basically looks linear. So we're going to treat it that way. So if we were going to write the equation of a tangent line, we know to write the equation of a line, you need a, a slope, which is m, and then you need an x1 and a y1, which is your point. So you can write it in point-slope form. Well, what, are, what we're going to do here is I'm going to basically rewrite this point-slope form. And if you understand that that's all we're doing, it's going to make the, make the rest of this really simple. All right. So, first of all, one thing we can do is we know that f of x is another name for y. So, right here, f of x is another name for y. So, I'm just going to call um, y f of x. I know that... Um, what we've been calling our, um, our x values that we plug in, a lot of times we call those a. Sometimes they've been called c. It just depends on what it is. But a lot of times we've been calling it a. And if the x value that we have for our point is a, then the y value at that point is just going to be the function evaluated at a. So that'll be f of a. <coughs> our slope... That's what we've been doing by taking a derivative is f prime of a. That is the definition of our slope of a tangent line, f prime of a. And fortunately, x is just x. Okay, that's just going to stay that way. So what we get out of all that replacing those things is that we get f of x, which is your y value, minus f of a, which is the x value plugged in, equals our slope f prime of a times x minus a. And to be an actual linearization, technically that is a linearization, but we want to solve this thing for f of x. Solving it for f of x just means I'm going to add the f of a to the other side. And typically that's put in the front for linearization. It doesn't really matter. But ultimately, this is the way the equation is going to look. Now, the only other thing is what I've just given you is the actual function. And this isn't the actual function. We're doing a linearization or looking at a very small portion of it. So instead of f of x, we're just going to change it to l of x, which just means it is the linearization. Ultimately, what I want you to take out of this, though, is that when we are doing a linear approximation or a linearization of something, all you are doing is finding the equation of the tangent line at that point. We've been doing that. Okay, this is nothing new. You're going to do the equation of the tangent line in any fashion. If you want to use this particular formula to know the equation of the tangent line, please do. That's all that this is. This right here is just the way you're going to see it, like written in a book or something like that. It is exactly the same formula. And then what you can do is, based upon whatever x value that they give you, you can plug all that stuff in and you'll be able to get your linearization. Really not that, uh, not that difficult to do. All right. So here is that formula that I just gave you on the previous page. L of x equals f of a plus f prime of a 
x minus a. Again, all it is is the equation of a tangent line written in point slope form, and you add the y value to the right. So you're basically solving it for y, but we call it L of x. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do this one example here, which says find the linearization of the function square root of x plus 3 at a equals 1 and use it to approximate the numbers square root of 3.98 and square root of 4.05. Okay, again, this is something we could plug into a calculator to get the exact value, but we're trying to do an approximation based upon linearization here. So what do we need? We need to find the equation of a tangent line. You need three things. You need x, you need y, and you need slope. Okay, so we can find the slope. We can take the derivative. That's going to be the square root of x plus 3. So when I take the derivative, it's 1 half x plus 3 to the negative 1 half. Using the chain rule, we divide, uh, excuse me, multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is 1, so I don't have to write that part. Okay, we need the x and y value. Well, they gave us the x value. That's a. We need the y value, so that's f of a. So f of 1 is what I get when I plug 1 in. When I plug 1 into the original function, I get the square root of 1 plus 3, which is the square root of 4, or 2. I also am going to need f prime evaluated at 1 because I need the actual value there. So if I plug 1 into f prime, I get 1 half of 4 to the negative 1 half. Don't forget that to the 1 half power is a square root. To the negative 1 half power is 1 over that square root. So really what I get is 1 half times, let's see, the square root of 4 is 2, but it's negative power, so it's 1 over 2, or 1 fourth. So I've got everything that I need. I've got my slope, I've got my x, and I've got my y. Let's write the equation of a tangent line first. That's why I left a little bit of space here. Let's actually write the equation of the tangent line. So it's y minus y1, which is 2, times slope, 1 fourth, x minus x1, which is 1. Now, to write this as a linearization, all I need to do is solve that equation for y. Add the 2 to the right. And again, typically it's put in the front. It doesn't matter if you put it at the end, but more commonly you'll see it put out in front. So if we add 2 to both sides, we get that the equation of the, tan of the linearization is 2 plus 1 fourth x minus 1. That's it. That is the linearization. Now we can use that to approximate things. So this is where you have to be just a little bit careful. I want to approximate the square root of 3.98. In order to do that, i got to go back to my original function and look at this thing and say, if I'm going to approximate the square root of 3.98, what does x have to be? Well, I've already got a 3 in here, so what do I have to add to 3 to get to 3.98? Well, x would have to be 0.98. So out front here, I'm going to write that x is 0.98. Now, to use the linearization, all I'm going to do is I'm going to plug 0.98 into my x values in my linear function. That's it. So the square root of 3.98 is going to be approximately 2 plus 1 fourth 0.98 minus 1. Okay, we can actually do this without a calculator, although we're probably going to end up using one anyway. 2 plus one-fourth times, that's negative 0.02, yeah. And then, again, you could do all this without a calculator, but we're going to plug it in, and we're going to get 1.99500, and I added those couple extra zeros on there for a reason. If you were to actually plug this into your calculator, plug in the square root of 3 point, square root of 3.98, and you're going to get... 1.99499. And as you can see, that is very close. It is accurate to within see tenths, hundredths, thousands, ten thousandths, one hundred thousandths. It is accurate to win within one one hundred thousandth of um of a of a value. Okay, we can do the same thing with the square root of 4.05. If I'm going to do the square root of 4.05, x in this case would have to be um, 1.05. Okay, 
because I've already got the 3 under the square root from the original function. So adding 1.05 to 3 gives me 4.05. So once again, 2 plus 1 fourth, 1.05 minus 1 is going to be 2 plus 1 fourth of 0 0.05. And plugging that one into the calculator, we get 2.01250. Again, I strongly urge you to plug these things into your calculator just so you get an idea of what you're doing. If you actually plug in square root of 4.05, which is going to be an approximation, obviously, it's going to be 2.01246. One one eight or something like that. So you can see that that one is also very, very accurate. It's only, um, let's see, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousand. It's only four hundred thousandths away. And it would make sense that it's slightly more away because 4.05 is a little further away from 4 than 3.98 is. So, um, all right. So there is um, the example. Um, I'm actually going to sketch this for you. Um, but... Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and do it in this video. All right, so let's let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. So first of all, the graph of f of x equals the square root of x plus 3 is the same thing as a square root graph of x that's been shifted three spaces to the left. So it's actually going to look something like this, where maybe that's where the graph starts, and then it's going to go up like that and gradually go off to infinity and we are specifically looking at um, in our case if X is 1 why did I pick 1 if X is 1 if you plug 1 in here let's scroll this up if you plug 1 because that's what we did here f of 1 if you plug 1 a is 1 into here, you're going to get the square root of 4, which is 2. That's a known value. Okay, that's easy. If you plug 1.05, square root of 4.05, again, was not an easy thing. That's why we use this to estimate it. So if we plugged in x is 1, we'll just say that x is 1 is right here. This is really not drawn to scale, but that's what we'll say. We know that the value here is 2. Okay, that's, that's given. What we've got is we've got a tangent line which is hitting that point. Let's see if I can draw this. So there's our tangent line. Okay, that's that L of X um, that we came up with, the 2 plus 1 fourth X minus 1. That's the tangent line. What you should see is that within a very, very small region around um, X is 1, around the blue dot, Within a very small region, that tangent line and the curve look like they're almost exactly the same. And as you could see by the examples that we did, if we use the tangent line and plugged in our x value of 0.98 or 1.05, which is like here, 0 0.98 and 1.05, like right there, the tangent line and the actual function's value are very, very close together. Now, obviously, the further we go out, like we would not use this specific tangent line approximation to approximate when x is something out here. That wouldn't make sense because, look, there's a massive gap right there. That looks like a 3. It was supposed to be a squiggly line there. It looks like a massive gap in values. That would not be a good approximation between there. But anything which is really, really close to the... Um, to the value x equals 1 here is going to be a very strong approximation. So that's what's really happening. We're using the tangent line, which looks really, really close to the curve within that localized region. And again, that's what we call the local region or the local linearization. So that's really what's happening um, in this type of a problem. One other thing I want you to take note of is that note that the tangent line is above the curve. So the red dotted line, which is your tangent line, is above the curve. So any value that we get on that tangent line, any y value that we take on that tangent line, except, of course, where it hits the graph itself, is going to be an estimate, which is an over approximation.
it will be an over approximation for the function. Okay, I think that's enough for this video. We're going to come back with a second video, and then we will pr probably actually have a third video um, for this unit.